Hello, I'm Eric Strong from Strong Medicine, and in this episode of Underappreciated Diseases, I'm discussing adult onset Stills disease. So what is it? In the simplest terms, it is a systemic inflammatory disease characterized by frequent fevers, arthritis, and an episodic rash. The unusual name of the condition comes from the fact that the disease was originally described in children by a British physician named George Frederick Still. Many decades later, an adult-onset version was described as well. Using the most up-to-date terminology, when the disease onset is at an earlier age than 16 years, it is referred to as systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It was formerly known as either Still's disease or systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis though this latter name was misleading since it doesn't really resemble rheumatoid arthritis either clinically or pathologically. When the onset of disease occurs at age 16 or later, it is known as adult-onset Stills disease. The fact that there remains a distinction in terminology based on a seemingly arbitrary age cutoff is largely historical, though there have been some observed differences in presentation between the two age groups raising the question as to whether or not they truly are the same disease. Regarding the clinical presentation, the three most common features were already mentioned. First, nearly all patients have recurring fevers, either daily, most typically in the late afternoon or early evening, or twice daily. The fevers usually exceed 102 degrees Fahrenheit or 39 degrees Celsius and are relatively brief, lasting for only a few hours even without the use of antipyretic medications. Because the fevers are often the initial manifestation of the disease, some patients are initially placed into the diagnostic category of fever of unknown origin, which results in a broad infectious and autoimmune workup. Arthritis and arthralgias are another very common feature. They begin as oligoarticular, meaning only affecting a small handful of joints, but in severe cases can result in a diffuse polyarticular arthritis. The most commonly affected joints are the knees, wrists, and ankles. And there is a classic rash. It's described as evanescent, meaning it comes and goes quickly, usually with the fever. It's classically described as salmon-colored, but this is only in fair-skinned patients. In darker-skinned individuals, the rash can range from difficult to see to dark brown. It is either macular or maculopapular, predominantly on the trunk and extremities, and is non-pyritic. Other clinical features include diffuse myalgias, pharyngitis, and cervical lymph adenopathy. Liver involvement can result in modestly elevated LFTs and or hepatomegaly. Splenomegaly is relatively common. Pericarditis and pericardial effusions. And the most serious of manifestations of adult onset Stills disease is macrophage activation syndrome, which is synonymous with hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis associated with rheumatologic condition. Uncommon but other serious complications include pleuritis, pulmonary hypertension, TTP, and DIC. Among lab abnormalities, the most common is elevation of ESR and CRP, while the most distinctive is extreme elevations of ferritin. Other common findings are elevated white blood cell count with a neutrophil predominance, a modest normocytic anemia, modest elevations of LFTs and LDH. As it is not an antibody-mediated disease, the autoantibodies ANA and rheumatoid factor are usually negative, which helps to distinguish adult-onset Stills disease from the more common connective tissue diseases. Regarding the pathogenesis of adult-onset Stills disease, in extreme brief, it remains unknown. It's generally believed that the development of the disease requires infectious exposure in genetically susceptible individuals, but the specific infection and genes involved are not yet established. Adult-onset Stills disease is generally considered to be more of an auto-inflammatory disease to distinguish it from diseases that are autoimmune meaning associated with autoantibodies, which don't appear to be present in this particular case. When it comes to diagnosis, adult-onset Stills disease is what is known as a clinical diagnosis, 
meaning that there isn't any one specific diagnostic test that rules it in. Instead, diagnosis is based on a combination of consistent symptoms, exam findings, and lab abnormalities, as well as on the basis of ruling out other similar diseases. To create some uniformity in how the disease is diagnosed, there are several proposed sets of diagnostic criteria, of which Yamaguchi is the most commonly used. To meet the Yamaguchi criteria, the patient must have at least five individual criteria, of which two must be from the list of major criteria. The major criteria includes recurrent fever of at least 39 degrees Celsius or 102.2 Fahrenheit, occurring over the course of at least one week, arthralgias or arthritis lasting at least two weeks, a non-pruritic macular or maculopapular rash over the trunk and or extremities during febrile episodes, and a white blood cell count of at least 10,000 with at least 80% neutrophils. The minor criteria are a sore throat, lymph adenopathy, hepatomegaly or splenomegaly, elevated LFTs, and a negative ANA and rheumatoid factor. However, these criteria should not be used as a substitute for the assessment by an expert. There are a number of more common alternative diseases which can also fulfill this criteria, such as lymphoma. Some versions of the Yamaguchi criteria specifically state that infections and malignancy must be separately ruled out. As has been stated and inferred, there are a number of other diseases which can present similarly to adult onset Stills disease. These include acute viral syndromes such as those caused by hepatitis, parvovirus B19, and acute HIV serial conversion, sepsis and bacteremia, including subacute endocarditis, autoimmune disease, including connective tissue diseases and vasculitis, the aforementioned hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, which is not mutually exclusive of Stills disease, lymphoma, and sarcoidosis. Because adult onset Stills disease is a rare disease, there are not large randomized trials to clearly establish what is the best treatment. Instead, there is expert opinion, anecdotal evidence, and small case series. Having said that, for mild disease, often non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as indomethacin are used alone, though some experts use NSAIDs plus prednisone. For acute, moderate to severe disease, the first-line treatment is the IL-1 receptor antagonist anakinra, but in locations where this is not available, steroids are second-line, either prednisone or for severe disease, intravenous steroids. And in cases of macrophage activation syndrome, anakinra plus steroids is a common treatment. For patients with a prolonged exacerbation, and for those with chronic disease, patients may be transitioned to a DMARD or disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, such as methotrexate, in order to wean them off of steroids, which caused many side effects with long-term use. A few other newer drugs that are occasionally used in moderate to severe cases include kenakinumab, tocilizumab, and TNF-alpha inhibitors such as infliximab. When it comes to the prognosis of adult onset Stills disease, there are three typical patterns to the disease course. The first is monophasic, in which there is a single acute flare that lasts from weeks to, to as long as a year, but then goes into remission and never recurs. The second is referred to as a polyphasic or intermittent pattern, in which there are multiple discrete flares separated by complete remissions, which last weeks to years. And the last is chronic, in which there are flares, but even between flares, the disease does not go into remission. This pattern tends to have more prominent articular symptoms than the others. Overall, among patients with new onset disease, there is a roughly equal probability of each of these three outcomes. Some predictors of a worse prognosis include erosive polyarthritis during the initial episode, involvement of the shoulder or hips, any cardiac involvement, and macrophage activation syndrome. That concludes this brief video overview of adult onset Stills disease. I hope you found it interesting and helpful.